So there's a lot of fear and indecision about where interest rates are going next year. And today, Lane and I are going to dive in. I'm Scott Sacken. My name is Lane Stone, and we're going to be talking about where interest rates are going to be heading in 2022. So hold on. Fasten your seatbelts. That's exactly right. Okay, so where are interest rates today? Let's start with that. Today, we're hovering in the low threes. Depending on what type of loan you're getting, you're anywhere from about three and an eighth to three and a half percent. Am I right on that, Lane? Yeah, no, you're exactly right. And that is what we've been used to for a long time. It seems like interest rates have been low for a while. I remember when I was working at the bank, uh, this was probably 2012, yeah. so maybe like 10 years ago or maybe 2011. Um, it was a huge deal when we flipped over the paper and it was we saw a five in the interest oh my rate. Gosh. And we, like our whole bank cheered. So <laughs> it, it, it's a thing. It, it, even though it's been three, it's it's not that long ago where we were at fives and sixes. It's not. We all have very short term memories. We get we do tend to get complacent with where things are, thinking there's not going to be a change until we wake up and look in the rearview mirror and say, Oh my goodness, there has been a change. So our goal today is to put a little context to this and look into the future a little bit to help us be prepared. Yeah, and you're tuning in because you want to find out where they're headed. So let's start with the short-term interest rates set by the Fed, okay? Because it was interest rates, they follow three different conditions. They follow the short-term interest rate head by, uh, uh, set by the Fed, the 10-year treasury, and the secondary market. We're going to talk about the first two, but let's talk about the uh, short-term interest rates first. Absolutely, and we know the short-term interest rates, just kind of loosely defined, is the rate at which commercial banks lend money to each other, what they charge. And we've been told uh, through our sources that the feds are going to raise that short-term rate probably about two to three times in 2022. Yep, planned plan three times is what okay. they're saying. Plan okay. three times. So that means that interest rates might be going up, but then from your savings account at the banks, your CDs and all that stuff that we're used to seeing 0.01% in your savings account for as far as interest, those are probably going to be going up yeah. a little bit too. So you'll see some of those go up, but overall interest rates whether it's your savings account or your mortgage interest rate, those are probably going to go up as well. Yeah. Again, understanding that this Fed rate is a leading indicator for what's going to happen across the board to the investment rates and the mortgage rates. Yeah. Now the 10-year Treasury note. So the last over the last 12 months, it's up almost 60%. So, and it's continuing to have that rising trend. So if that continues next year as well, then that will put an effect on mortgage interest rates and have them go up a little bit as well. So Freddie Mac... Here we go. They have the Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4 projections. So let's see if we feel that they're right on let's or if they're it. a little low or a little high. Okay. Yes. Uh, Q1 2022, they think that interest mortgage interest rates are going to be at 3.4%. Okay. So that sound about right? I would say that sounds about right from everything we're hearing, supply and demand out there and what's happening in the economy. I, I would say yes. Okay. Me too. Uh, Q2 2022, 3.5%. I think that's a very small incremental rise. And again, we're looking at Q2. So that's what coming down four or five months down the line. I would also say that's reasonable and we could expect to see that. Yep. Okay. Me too. Me too. Uh, Q3 2022, 3.6%. We're looking at 0.1 <laughs> increments here, but 3.6%. These are so darn incremental. I don't see that there's much, there, there's not a big risk uh, here as to, you know, in our predictions anyway, because they're not saying they're jumping to 4%. So I would say, again, that's that's pretty darn reasonable because, again, we look incrementally from where we are now to six months out. That's not much of a rise. See, I think that I think that prediction is reasonable, but I also think it, for me, it might be a little bit low if, if everything continues to rise. So if they do those planned short-term interest rate increases, if that 10 years continues to go up, I think it's probably at that point, Q3, going to be closer to 4 um, than maybe 3.6. That's my prediction. Um, one of the reasons why is inflation. Right. So to come, they're doing these interest rate increases because they want to combat inflation. Yeah. And there's other programs that I know the feds that the feds talking about implementing, which p will put more money into the whole households, which will then cause inflation to go up even more. So the only way that they're going to be able to com combat a rise in inflation is, are to increase these interest rates. So by Q3, if we see that, it, that inflation is kind of on the rise, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they're going to have to raise interest rates. Well, I think, Lane, you were absolutely reading my mind and finishing my brain waves at that very moment because we know from what we've been told inflation is at a 39 year high we have not only become complacent with low interest rates but for many of us in our lifetimes or the majority of our adult lifetimes we've seen very very low inflation and we're all seeing it whether it's at the gas pump the grocery store inflation is out of control to my everyday life it feels like and yeah. I and I would tend to agree with you then and maybe correct my my prediction that 
it's going to take a fairly significant rise in the mortgage interest rates to help combat that and bring it down. And again, to me, just as Joe Q. Public, it just seems like inflation is out of control. Yeah, no, and it's actually, not only is it having an effect on goods that people are purchasing, but it's also rents are going way high, too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And for a state like California, where there is some, some form of rent control, where corporations can um, increase the rent by a certain percentage plus inflation. Now, if that inflation number is really high, then your rent's going to be, even with rent control, your rent's going to be increased really high. So there's going to be this gap next year, and watch for it, where I think that a lot of people that are in rentals and, ha and paying really high prices, and the prices are going up in rentals because of inflation, and interest rates staying really low, that a lot of renters are going to get off the fence and be a and purchase because they're going to take advantage, even though rates might be come Q3 mm -hmm. closer to four, still a lot less on a monthly payment than where rents are going to head to. Absolutely. So I think we're in consensus. If we see rates, let's say, uh, closer to the 4% range from our prediction, perhaps Lane's and my prediction is a little more aggressive than what we're hearing from the feds, what would our advice be to people thinking about selling their homes? How is this going to impact folks making a decision if it's their time to sell or not? It all depends on what their situation is. Are they selling a house to buy something? And if they are buying something else, are they need, do they need to take out a loan on that particular situation? So then, if they're are they staying local or are they moving out of state? And where where can they do what can they do for like jobs mm -hmm. and all that stuff? There's a lot of variables in play yeah. of like what for each particular seller. But let's just say, um, young family, they own a condo. They want to sell the condo mm -hmm. and they want to take the proceeds and buy a bigger house because their family is Correct. is particularly growing. So I would say that you might want to consider selling sooner than later mm -hmm. for a couple of reasons. One, because the house that you're going to purchase will be cheaper yep. than it would be by this time. Because even though interest rates are going up, the same predictions and the same people that say interest rates are going up are saying that prices are going to continue to appreciate as well. Yeah. So if you know for a fact that you're going to be needing something bigger, I would probably do it sooner than later because you can borrow on a lower payment and buy on a lower price. Exactly. Um, if you do it sooner or later. Now, if you're buying all cash or if you're retiring and all that stuff, it might you might not have as much of an effect on you. Obviously, the purchase price will have an effect mm -hmm, on mm -hmm. you, which they're seeing they're seeing appreciation, but maybe not at levels that we saw the, over the last yeah. twelve months. So you probably have a little bit more flexibility of waiting as opposed to selling and then and then buying uh, right away. That's a great call. That's a great call. There's so many variables that, that do tie into this, but hopefully today's video and show has helped shed a little bit more light on where things are going. And again, ours, our predictions. So stay tuned to see if we're right or not. Well, okay, let's do that. So come this time next year. Okay. So we're December, 2021. Yes. December, 2022. If you had to write on a piece of paper right now, what percentage would, what interest rates do you think would be at for mortgages? I'm going to change my prediction lane from the outset of this show, and I'm going to say that we're actually going to be a full point higher than we are right now. So three to three point three or four to four point two five. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm going to go bold. Go bold. Yeah, mine is four point one two five percent. That's okay. going to be mine. Four point one two five percent is where I think interest rates are going to be. And we didn't confer, so this is it. So lane's four point one two five. I'm going to say four point two five. Now, before we sign up, can I go over like one more scenario? Absolutely. So let's yeah, say let's interest rates do go up to four about yes, Q two. Right. And they fluctuate maybe mm -hmm. throughout the year. If you're a home buyer and you lock in at an interest rate of over four percent, but then you see a dip down to three point seven five or three point five, there are different. There are a couple options, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, you can you can always refinance. That's the beauty of things. If you get into a mortgage, and remember, mortgages are leveraged investments. So you pay a price for the house. Your mortgage is a percentage of that price, and your payment is based accordingly. But if interest rates do ever drop, you have the beauty of refinancing into a new loan. Yeah, one more thing that I do want to mention is if you are buying something and you're in the middle of escrow and you lock in at an interest rate that's above 4%, and then while you're in escrow, before you close, it goes down to 3.75, I don't think it'll fluctuate that much, but let's just use that as an example. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, man, I, I just uh, you know locked in at over 4%. Yeah. Ask your mortgage broker if they allow for a one-time flow down. Yeah. Because they might allow you to float that rate mm -hmm. down one time. And maybe that's a good question to ask even mm -hmm. before you get into the search searching portion of your um, yeah. home search. And I want to add one more thing too, Lane. I think that's awesome news. But the other thing is as we talk about rates in kind of an ethereal sense, really what the consumer wants to do is look and say, how does that increase, these, these incremental increases actually affect what the mortgage payment is going to be. How much more is it going to cost you each month if rates were to go up, let's say, worst case scenario by 1%. And we're always here to help with that. Good mortgage brokers are as well. But it's always good to have that information in mind, you know, before you ever make a decision. And it's not 
as bad as most people think. And stay tuned because we're actually going to do a video on just that topic. But that's it for us today. Uh, we're talking about interest rates and where they're headed for 2022. If you have any questions, uh, comments, leave them in the comments bo section below. We love doing these videos. We're going to come back same time, same place next week for an episode of SNL. Absolutely. And thanks, Lane, for all of your research getting ready for today. We'll see you again soon. Bye.